So, talking about, um, um, can we talk about dressing? Yeah. Because before I was talking with the other brother, and he was telling me that dressing is in the Bible. Mm. So, is there any how uh, we have to dress? Yes, God gave us a dress code. Okay. When you read Numbers 15. So how I'm, I'm dressed now is not, is not... Well, only, only, well I'm, I was joking with the holes. Okay. With that. But there's one thing, like you see all of us have this on our clothing. Yeah. This is called fringes. Okay. There's a reason why we all have that on our clothes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Numbers 15, verse 37. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. See the ribbon of blue we have told you? Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it. That you may look upon the fringe. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. To and, remember <clears throat> all the commandments of the Lord. And do them. And do them. So this represents what, Tony? The commandments. Yes, mm -hmm. this is why we wear it. So if I'm about to steal, I'll look, I'll go, shoot. Thou shalt not steal. I shouldn't do that. If I'm about to commit adultery one night, I say, oh shoot, thou shalt not commit adultery. Let me get out of here. It's supposed to bring to your remembrance, keep the commandments. Keep okay. the commandments. Was that it? Yes, sir. No. And to do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a whoring, mm -hmm. that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Right. So the people may say, They'll use, a, they'll use the Apostle Paul and say, a Jew is not one, give me that Romans 2. Yes, a Jew is not one outwardly, but inwardly. This is what churches do. Because they don't want us to keep this. They want us to dress the fashions of the world. We watch this. Romans chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. So Christians use that to say, see, a Jew is not one outwardly with the fringes, but it's the inner man. Now that's partially true. I'll ask you a question. If I dress like a woman and the inside I change my life, how will it affect my outside? Will it change my outside if I change my life to keep God's laws? Will I continue dressing like a a woman? No, no. No, it'll eventually change the outside. Give me that, the law of women, yes, men sir. and women. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Meaning women should not wear what men wear, like trousers. Women's not supposed to wear that. Okay. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You shouldn't wear a bra. You shouldn't wear a dress. You shouldn't wear high heels. Go ahead. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So everybody that breaks that law, you're an abomination. If you dress like a woman, that's a sin. If a woman dresses like a man, that's a sin. Okay. So the dress code has an importance. So they twist Romans 2 when it says a Jew is not one outwardly, but then they twist it. Because if I am a homosexual, I sleep with men, and I dress like a woman, hi, I'm a woman. You know I ain't no damn woman. Right. When I read the Bible, I'll start to change my life and go, you know what? <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> I need to change my life. Right. Let me get out of these high heels, take this bra off. Damn it, what the hell is wrong with me? Right. I'll change my life. Churches try to pervert that right. and not understand that. Okay, homosexuality is against God. It's antichrist. Remember God said, give me Genesis uh, 1 yes. first. You know what I want, be uh, fruitful, I know. Yes. God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. See that part? Be fruitful and multiply. What does that mean? What does that mean? Be, be fruitful. fruitful. Give birth. Right. Yeah. Can two men give birth? No. No. Right. So, Leviticus 20, 13. That might be too hard. Is that too hard for the hand? <laughs> you do 18 for your work. Okay, do it that. Do it that. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So one man makes believe he's a woman. Oh, hi, Tony. And, he, <laughs> <laughs> and you want to lay down with that guy. God, God says that's an abomination. Right. Now, it says the same thing in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Give me that Romans 1. Yes, sir. Because Christians will say, don't look at your clip and go, See, they always read out of the Old Testament. No, we don't. 
We read out of both, Old and New Testament. They say the same thing. Romans chapter 1 and verse 26. For this, cause, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. What's the natural use of a woman? To, to give birth? Yeah. Yeah. With a, with a man, right? Yeah, with a man. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned their lust one toward another. Woo, look at Tony. He got nice shoulders. Oh, I like the way he Burning in their lust for a man. Mm -hmm. God says, no, that's wrong, man. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. Working that which is not right. It's insane. Go ahead. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. So as a homosexual, what do you get? Oftentimes you get STDs, AIDS, gonorrhea, HIV, uh, genital warts. And, and you get there with all kinds of sexual diseases. I mean... Uh, even with man and woman. Okay. However, you also get it with homosexuality at a, at a higher and alarming rate. That's why the suicide rate for homosexuals and transgenders is at an all-time high. Because they, it's a mental, you know, a mental disorder. Mental disorder. Oh, okay. A so, demon. Right. <laughs> so, for someone being homosexual, is it a demonic spirit or...? Yeah, it is a it demon, is. Demon, demonic spirit. That's why, uh, and give me that one in Luke, when Christ said, this is the spirit for this demon. Yes, sir. Go now, now. Yeah. Because I had um, a conversation with one, and he was telling me that he was born. Stop. Give me Luke James. Give me James. Yes, sir. I knew you were going to say that. Right. These people, that's the new spell. Say you were born that way. Hey, Tony, let me ask you this. If I'm a thief, was I born a thief? No. No. If I'm a, uh, uh, an adulterer, was I born as an adulterer? No, no. So all these sins, you're not born like that. You choose that. Right. Watch what it says in James chapter 1. James 1 verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. If I'm tempted to lust after you, God's not doing that. God's not saying, hey, look at Tony, lust after him. Right. No. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So why am I tempted? I'm drawn away of what? My own. My own lust. Yeah, yeah. So if you're homosexual, you're drawn away, you're tempted of your own lust. Go ahead. And enticed. And enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Hear what God says? Mm. He said, that's your own lust. That's something you chose to do, right. you know? Like we know that there are many things that happen to some of our people. Like in certain families, let's say a child is molested at a young age. That will affect them. And it causes that mental disorder. Mm -hmm. So there are many causes and effects. We, we understand that. But we can't blame it on God and say, God made me a thief. Mm -hmm. God made me an adulterer. God made me homosexual. No, 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 no. You chose to be a thief. You chose to be an adulterer. You chose to be homosexual. Wow. <clears throat> what you got? Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Lo, this only have I found, that God have made man upright. God made man upright. But they have sought out many inventions. Our people sought out many inventions. That's what, you know, it's in Africa, the white man is pushing the LGBT community, right? Yeah. I'm going to give an example. Watch this. President, former President Obama, right? He went to Nigeria. Nigerian president asked President Obama, former President Obama, help us against Boko Haram. Obama said, we'll help you only under the condition that you accept LGBT. Mm. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Now, recent times, we're under Biden administration. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same. They say, listen, you must accept LGBT or we're going to put sanctions on you. The okay. president of Uganda, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. You know what's the name? President of Uganda. No. Oh. I forgot his name. He said, I'm not, we're not accepting that. They said, oh, we're going to put sanctions on you. We're not giving you any money. We're not going to help you. You see how evil that is? Mm -hmm. But then the president of Uganda said, why don't you? No, it was PLO Lamoma said, 
Why aren't they forcing that on the Arabs? Right. Why aren't they forcing that on the Chinese? Mm -hmm. Why on the blacks? Because we're the children of Israel. Keep us in sin. Okay. That way God will never deliver these people. Keep them in sin. That's what it is. And we fall for it. Remember, Kamala <coughs> Harris visited Ghana early, uh, late last year and tried to push that same narrative on okay. sexuality. And it was an uproar amongst the people. A lot of reporters were going public saying, hey, look, why would you, you can't even govern your own country. Why would you come to Ghana and try to force homosexuality on us? So that's what America does. Wow. Yes. So let me ask this question about the new generation. We usually, what about um, something like sex before marriage? Get that. Exodus uh, 22, mm -hmm. 16. Sex before marriage. It's not even sex before, it's sex without marriage. That's without marriage. Yeah, okay. Exodus 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if you're having sex with a woman, what must you do to her now? Uh, with the woman. My woman or... Oh, you're married? Not yet. Okay, really, yeah. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, she's not engaged, okay. and lie with her, you have sex with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. You must make her your what? Your wife. Yes, that's the law. If okay. you have sex with a woman, God says you must make her your wife. That's the law, but we don't follow. Uh, European Western powers have taught us we don't have to obey that. Right. We can have, here's a condom. Have sex, sex, and more sex, whoever you want to do it with. Lewdness. Yeah, lewdness. The seriousness, they keep us in sin total. The families are broken up. You ever notice the black families are all destroyed, messed up? Because we've been taught family's not important. Just have sex with these stupid, whoever you want with these crazy women out here. You gotta find a good woman, a good wife, and have a family. That's what Paul was addressing in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Well, give me a first Corinthians 7 and 2. Yes, sir. Watch this. Song. And then we went Hebrews 13. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Fornication is sexual sins. Dealing with prostitutes, having sex with different women. Go ahead. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. You see that? To avoid sexual sins, have your own wife. Then our people go, oh, Hebrews 13. Oh, I have an STD. Were you sleeping with different women? Yes. You did that to yourself. Right. Watch this. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Break that down. So what the Bible is saying, marriage is an honorable thing. From the beginning, right, there was no such thing as men sleeping with a whole bunch of women or having a whole bunch of wives. Adam only had Eve, you understand? Yeah. So marriage is an honorable thing. And the bed undefiled, meaning with your wife, you can do whatever you want to do in the bedroom, long as it doesn't violate the laws written in Leviticus 18, right? Then it says, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God has judgment for whoremongers. You have STDs, child support. You understand? That's a judgment from God. You didn't do the right thing with that woman. You didn't marry that woman to raise those children together. That's a judgment from God on our people. Okay. And a lot of our men are in jail because of back child support, right? That's a judgment from God. Also, He'll put you with a crazy woman and she'll take you to hell. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so marriage is honorable. God always honors and glorifies marriage. We've not been taught to do that. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity.